Um, basically, I, I was called at half nine in the morning and I look after, we have a sore pump here on site and I've always looked after for fear of flooding and to make sure everything goes away. And when I went over to check it, the pump was working, but the water was everywhere. It was all coming up the steps of the house. So I realized then fairly quickly that it was coming up the manholes on the road outside the house here, mm. which has nothing to do with us. It's the main manholes. And out on that road, the far side of the hotel, that the whole system was totally backing up. The first thing I did, Dennis, is right, the pump in the Northlands, I've got to get up there and ask him to hold back, stop pumping for an hour, which he did, by the way. And then um, he said, give me an hour. And I said, right, just give it an hour to see if we can hold back the levels here. Because I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's the bottom line of the patio. You see the dirt on the patio door here? Yeah. The water was up to the top of the step and we knew we were okay at that stage. But it was rising within half an hour. It was up to the glass level and we roughly now exaggerated a bit six inches but we had a good four inches of water right through the house there was no time to do anything the fire brigade were here fair play to them they waited all day long three different fire tenders one from ashburn came over to join the two local ones and there was nothing to do and i knew that myself because this, the streams had all overflown and come in here so but they still said but what annoyed me most is but not to being political or anything is there's an area up the road called Northlands, and they did work up there, and they've some kind of a holding tank, but they need pumps to clear it. And the only way water goes to the sea from Northlands, and I'm not an engineer, is by these little streams. So the more pressure you pump up there coming down here, the tide was in, full tide, there was a this red moon thing they call it. It wasn't going out down there, is it? So where's it going? It just happened to be coming in here. The house is destroyed, I'm not trying to be exaggerating or anything, but I, um, there were a load of volunteers came today, no idea, fantastic people I never knew. And the more we took out, the more damage we realised it was. We're just seeing some of it here. Yeah, that's just some of the it. Big, yeah. A big issue here is, I have bad health myself, I have leukaemia and I'm on a special infusion for my immune system is, this is sore water. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the council didn't call it what they want to call it, but this is a mixture of sore water. So everything it touches mm. isn't pure gold, they said, it's pure you know what. And I said, everything has to be this, what do we do? Yeah. We're in here now hoping to dry it out. We try and disinfect it. Do the best you can. And that's all we can do, yeah. But uh, my own feeling is there's a lot of people activity today. Keegan, Sharon Keegan was very good as soon as she found out, because we sent an email, a message to her. She'd come over right away with farms for us to try and claim back money here, there, and different, you know, positive stuff. But the real issue is nobody gave a damn about the village. The council offloaded everything they had into Northlands, and I, I think that's unfair, very, very unfair. Maybe I'm naive at my age, but. There should have been some more support. I don't think there was anything they could do because they made a mess of the whole situation. Mm. We were promised a flood defence. The Office of Public Works did an open day here. They guaranteed it to us. We'd contact them through our management company. And um, that's it. Mm. That's three years ago and still nothing done.